love and joy come to you and to you your family too and god bless you and send you a happy new year and god send you a happy new year well friends welcome to day eight of the 12 days of christmas it's january 1 and, and on that day, normally we remember a special part of the story of, of Jesus' birth, where he was both circumcised and given a name. He was placed under the law of Moses because it said that he would fulfill the law of Moses, so he had to be circumcised. And, and then also he was given a name, and the name he was given was the name that the angels told, Jesus, or Joshua, which means he saves. The name he was given is exactly what he does for all of us. And we bear that name too. Well, it's a little bit more into the story that we're going to go into today, a, a section of scripture from verse 21 of Luke 2 to verse 40. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but, but it talks about the purification of Mary and Jesus being presented at the temple. Now, According to Jewish law, Mary, 40 days after she gave birth, had to come and be purified at the temple. And that's a special ceremony and, and a special uh, remembrance and sacrifice. And then because Jesus was the firstborn child, the firstborn son, he had to be redeemed, if you will, and a special sacrifice given because he was given to Mary and Joseph as a gift, and the firstborn always is given to the Lord, and so he had to be redeemed by the gift. That was the old Jewish ceremonial law. But you'll see as we go through this story, not only that the law was being fulfilled, but it got bigger and bigger and bigger as God increased the circle of people who knew and understood and received the promise. Well, let's turn to the Word of God. It's Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 21. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angels, even before he was conceived. Then it was time for their purification offering, as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him before the Lord. The law of the Lord says, If a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. This, friends, is the word of the Lord. Well, this section of the story goes on and on. We just read a little bit of it. it. It includes a bigger and bigger circle as Simeon, who had been waiting and, and had been told that he would not die before he saw the Lord's Christ, and Anna, who was looking for the redemption of Israel. These two faithful, holy people. Well, they surprised Mary and Joseph, for sure. I, I don't know after all the things that had happened with Mary and Joseph, why they should be surprised at the next thing. And they were used, used to perhaps angels coming and talking to them and dreams happening. But instead, there's a very faithful man and woman of God who are reacting. Mary and Joseph, as I said, they were astonished. Simeon, he was just grateful and thankful that his life purpose had been fulfilled. And Anna, I want to encourage you to think about Anna. When, when she saw Jesus and heard what Simeon had said, it says that she praised God and told all the people about this Jesus, all the people who were waiting for redemption, the redemption of Israel. Friends, I want to encourage you to think about this New Year's Day as a chance for you to be like Anna and, and for you not only to increase the circle as, as God did. First, it was Mary and Joseph and, and 
maybe the innkeeper was around and then you get a little bit bigger and the shepherds were there. And, and then now it's, it's Simeon and Anna were there. And, and a little while later, it's the wise men that are going to be there. God keeps on increasing the circle because his heart is that not only you find hope, but through you, the world finds hope in Jesus. You see, the world's looking for redemption and the world's looking for peace. Not, not everybody understands what they're looking for, but there's this God-sized hole in everybody's heart that the gift of the Christ child can fill. We talked about it before. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft undefiled within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. Everybody's heart has got a place for God. Now, some people look in the wrong place for God. And, and they follow other gods thinking, well, everybody's kind of the same. And you all get to the same place in the end anyway. Well, Simeon knew different. And Anna knew different. And you and I, we know different. That there is one way to salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. And so today, how about if as you're putting together maybe a list of resolutions. What if one of the resolutions you include in there is, tell somebody I know about the hope that I have of the redemption in Jesus Christ that he has given to me. You know, it, it doesn't mean that you are an evangelist and it doesn't mean that you have to go with a megaphone every place uh, around or, or, or talk on a loudspeaker or get on the radio. It may be just a simple, let me tell you about Christ and what he means to me. Maybe a card that includes the Christ of Christmas is my reason or, uh, for hope. Or, or a letter that you send that you, th that you finish off with the words, I'm looking forward to the, the redemption that I have in Jesus. How about you? And encourage someone else to find the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we're looking at a new year and, and praise you that, that you saw us through 2020 and now we know you're gonna see us through 2021. And would you also use our lives, use our lives as a witness of your love, not only explain and express in our hearts the gift of the Christ child, but help us to be simple witnesses of love in large and in small ways. Help someone find the hope that we have. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, I don't know about you, but one of the images that I have in my whole life is, is uh, that Titanic. And what people must have done with everyone screaming and crying as a lifeboat came in, looking for someone who's alive, pulling them out. Friends, the world needs that kind of rescue. The world is dying without Jesus Christ. Let us be about rowing in the lifeboats and plucking people out of the hands of hell, the hands of Satan, and into the loving arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have confidence that he can use you for that purpose. So with that, that's enough for day eight. Day nine's tomorrow. See you then.